Opposed? That passes unanimously. Okay, this will begin the public hearing portion of our meeting. The Conway Planning Commission makes recommendations to the City Council on public hearing items. Items reviewed on this agenda will be considered by the City Council as early as August 23rd, 2022. Items not approved by the Planning Commission may be appealed to the City Council within 30 days of the date of Planning Commission denial, with exception of decisions made by the Planning Commission acting as the Board of Zoning Adjustment. Our first item is a request for a zoning variance to allow a reduced front setback for property located at 1255 Zara Road. And James has the floor. Yes, uh, this is one of the newly created lots uh, in Bell Valley. Uh, the request is to reduce the front setback from 25 feet to 22.2 feet. Uh, so a variance of about 2.8 uh, feet. Uh, the applicant recently purchased the newly platted lot from a local developer. Uh, the applicant asserts the lot's design has rendered it largely unbuildable uh, due to a large drainage easement. So there's a large drainage easement that traverses a large portion of the property, even though it's a nearly a third of an acre in size. Uh, the request will have the, re the effect of reducing the front setback on ZAR uh, by 2.8 feet and allow a small footprint home to be constructed on the site. Um, you, you can see there it's got the... Uh, Sort of the front will face towards the north, so it is a little bit of a weird uh, triangle lot in that. Uh, it's highly abnormal to grant a variance request for newly created lots. That's generally not something you usually do. Uh, the necessity for a variance is not the result of the actions by the applicant. Uh, the need for a variance is the result of a drainage channel traversing the lot. Uh, staff concurs with the, the assertions made in the applicant's letter of request that the circumstances facing this lot are unique and not generally applicable to other properties. Uh, granting the variance would allow normal use of the site, wouldn't grant special uh, conditions for the property. Uh, development of the site is likely not possible without granting the variance, uh, and it, the lot has abnormal setbacks. Uh, so we don't expect that uh, granting the request would uh, result in any harm. Uh, for adjacent property. So based on that, staff recommends approval of the variance on the following basis. Granting the variance would allow appropriate development of the site without harming adjacent property, would allow the property to be used in a similar fashion to properties in the immediate vicinity, and appears to be the minimum variance necessary to allow use of the site for a single family home. Strict enforcement of the zoning code would cause undue hardship for the property due to the unique challenging design of the site. So, any questions? It's just that one lot, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. Any questions? Oops. Thank you. Anyone here to speak in favor of this? Uh, Frankshaw 1315 Main Street, uh, Conway, and um, I'm the developer that sold it to Roush, and Jesse Fulcher is here from Roush. When we did this, um, you can see there's part of a lot on the other side of the, this was a creek, basically a ditch. And we have a lot on the other side that you can't get to. We thought we could probably find a plan in their um, enormous book of plans that would fit. The one we got that fits the closest needs 2.8 more feet. This, this is a street to Sar Road that has already been approved and platted. They've already purchased all of it except, well, they purchased this lot as well. And um, Jesse's here as well, but um, it's 2.8 feet on the front. So I'd ask you to pass it, please. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in favor of? Anyone to speak in opposition of this item? Okay. We'll bring it to commission. Any questions, any discussion? Ready for a vote? Move to approve. Second. I have a motion by Rebecca, second by Leticia. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Any opposed? I oppose. <laughs> Any abstain? One abstention? Sorry, one nay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The motion passes. Our next item is the request to rezone one. Uh, I1 and C2 to C2 and C3. 
Yes. yes. <clears throat> so this is related to property that is east on uh, East Dave Ward Drive. It's just east of the Lewis Crossing and the Lewis Ranch shopping areas. Uh, the applicant is requesting to rezone a total of 5.9 acres located north of East Dave Ward Drive and east of the Lewis Ranch shopping area. Of the total, 3.21 acres, which is 1480 East Dave Ward Drive, which is the eastern, excuse me, the westernmost portion of the property, is requested to be rezoned from C2 to C3. And the remaining 2.69 acres, which comprises the other portion to the east, from I1 to C2. The property at 1500 and 1520 is currently developed with two multi tenant office buildings, uh, while the 1480, the property to the west, is vacant. The applicant has indicated plans to expand the structure uh, and associated parking that's located at 1520 East Dave Ward Drive for the continued use of the Conway VA outpatient clinic. The applicant has also provided plans for a proposed multi-tenant retail and office building that's planned for the vacant portion of the property in the request. While the comprehensive plan does indicate the property is appropriate for single family, this is largely due to the fact that vacant properties were designated uh, as such single family, often without consideration when they were on outlying areas without consideration of their proximity to major roadways and utility access and such. I think you know that that area is starting to transition. Uh, additionally, the property abuts areas indicated for both general industry and multifamily on the comprehensive plan, and neither property is currently zoned to even allow a single family development by right. This application is submitted in association with another rezoning request, which will be next on your agenda. So I wanted to let you know, the original application that was submitted requested that the entire property be rezoned to C3. However, following our staff review, we discussed with the applicant and uh, the applicant did agree to downgrade the 1500 and 1520 portion of the request to be rezoned to C2 instead of C3. Uh, this will create a needed transition as you move to the east from really intense commercial retail spaces to the more rural residential and agricultural areas to the east. Um, as modified, the requested zoning districts will allow by right all of the potential future uses that the applicant has identified. Staff does recommend approval of the request as modified as it will allow for the appropriate use of the property while providing the necessary transition from high intensity uses to the rural residential uses. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Anyone here to speak in favor of this project? I'm Fred Langford, 1500 East Dave Ward Drive, and I actually occupy one of those buildings. Um, but the VA clinic, of course, is the, the other occupant of the other building. We're looking to expand that building, whether it is the VA or whether it's someone else, we're looking to expand that. It's worked very well. And I currently occupy the other building. I'm going to be moving out more than likely, uh, and I'm planning to lease that building. And I'd like to have an insurance agency or attorney or something, something of that nature, a mortgage company or something. It's office type products. If you've seen what they look like, that's that's the plan. And the C2 would give me the ability to have other uses instead of an industrial zone. Now, just to the west that I'm requesting on the C3. Uh, I've already shared with the staff here my plans for that. And if you're familiar with the building at um, next to Buffalo Wild Wings, corner of Halter and Amity, where the blood soap chiropractic clinic is, that is our building. And we plan to put another one similar to that on the front facing East Avor Drive to that one. So that's what our plans are. Just just clarifying, you're saying the building that is Bledsoe Chiropractic or the Dudek building next to that? Just to make sure I'm clear. I'm sorry, the Bledsoe Chiropractic clinic. That is building your building. Will be, yes, and okay. that will be similar to the building that we Understood. put there at 1480. Understood. Okay, thank you. Yes. Question, um, the VA clinic is in there, and what is the other business that's in there? What What's in there now? It's all VA. It's all VA, okay. Yes. At 1520. At 1520. Okay. I'm 1500. Okay. Right next door. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in favor of this project? Anyone to speak in opposition of this item? 
bring it into commission. Motion, motion to approve. Sorry. Motion to approve. What? Second. Motion by Drew, a second by Ethan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any op opposition? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Okay, our next item is request to rezone C2 to C3 at 1310 to 1450 East Dayboard Drive. Yes, so this is the associated application and it deals with the eight acres just west of the property you just looked at. Uh, currently, the entire portion of this is zoned C2, but if you refer to your map, they're actually only asking for a rezoning of the southern eight acres there. They'll deal with the rest of the property when they're ready to develop that accordingly. Uh, the request is compromised, as I said, of the southern portions. Um, the western part of this property is currently being used um, for manufactured home sales, uh, but beyond that, the property is generally undeveloped. Uh, the applicant did meet with staff in May and discussed preliminary plans to subdivide this property and develop, develop it with various retail and dining options, uh, though they have not submitted any plans for formal review at this time. The comprehensive plan does indicate that the area is appropriate for both commercial and general industry. Additionally, the site is adjacent to both Lewis Ranch shopping area directly to the west and the developing Molly District, which is just to the south across the road where the new hotel is going in. Uh, the increase in traffic impact could be significant, but again, when it's fully developed, this is largely due to the fact that the site is clearly mostly undeveloped. Uh, while the applicant does intend to construct a new internal drive, which will serve the lots uh, and not put as much traffic out onto Dayport Drive. The application, as I said, is uh, associated with the previous one, and staff does recommend approval of the request as it will allow for appropriate use of the property and will not likely negatively impact the adjacent property. Any questions? Anyone here to speak in favor of this project? Oh. Bobby French with uh, Central Arkansas Professional Surveying, uh, 1021 Front Street. Uh, they're just really trying to get C3. They're wanting some restaurants and possibly something like that that's to the west. Uh, we did talk with staff, and we were going to put a street we're planning on putting a street that connects over to Lewis Ranch to the west, just kind of to, if you see, I don't know if y'all see that, where the north line of that is, there'll be a street going to the west, and then Fred and Mr. Good are going to build a road going to the north over on the east side of the property also. That north side of that, the yellow line, that'll be a street, a private street that they'll build that connects over and goes all the way through to uh, Amity, South Amity. Uh, there will be, the Master Street Plan has a street that goes to the north, so in between what Fred owns and then Good, there'll be one that goes to the north, that, and it'll eventually get up to south, to Sutherland up there somewhere. Between Fred and the Good property, there'll be a road that goes. Uh, I think Rankin has bought that from Fred up there. Up there to the, bought that just north of... Directly north of what Fred and what the Goo's own up there. He, he's bought that, and I think they're talking about apartments or something up there at some point, maybe, possibly. Thank you, Bob. Right, thank you. Anyone else to speak in favor of this project? Anyone to speak in opposition of it? Bigger challenge that we have. I'm with Sorry, Clayton. could I have your name and address? Danny please? Mills. Danny Mills. Okay. Address. Manager of Clayton Homes. One has that cell center that you got. They're wanting to take a, well, I understand the road they're going in. We lease 10.62 acres in that deal, and it will not be up until April of 20, uh, 2024. Uh, that road proposal is going through the property that we lease right now, which is in that 10.62 acres. That's my challenge. That is also the entrance where our houses come in on that back side. That's everything that we come in, and, that, and that's where that road is, is planning on going. Is in our drive where our houses are going. 
and is in part of the lease that we have until 2024, April, the end of 2024. Do you lease the property for your driveway and for the plate yes, homes? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> And like I said, that lease is up in April 30th, of 2024. Uh, I've talked to I've talked to Grant about that, and he says we're going to use the drive, but I, that's that's not what I'm going to do. If I if I'm going to use that drive, that drive is going to get torn up. And you know, you're saying, hey, it's the city or whoever's going to put the drive into that's my house is going to go in there. It's going to tear up the drive, and I don't want to be responsible for it. I don't want to have any part of that piece. And that's my town. That's where my gate is, and that's where my houses come in and go all over that lot right there. I've got houses that are sitting in where that where that drive is going to go as well. So those those are my challenges. So I'm just being straight up what I've got a hold of, and that's what we got. So as as Grant has said, um, you know, his conversation with me he says, "Hey, will you work with me?" Well, that's that's a problem for me. That's what I'm sitting on here because that's again that's where my houses are coming. The only other gate I've got go straight down the center of my house is where I've already got them all set. So that's my only entrance right there. So Grant, the Grant person, is the one that is wanting to rezone this property for retail and dining, possibly. I'm understanding that's, that's the case. And you said he's asked if you could work together with him. Right, and, and that's, that's my drive. I mean, that's where it is. And so my house has come in, they're going to drag, they're going to tear it up because it gets torn up right now. Once that once that that drive is in there, that's where I am. So we extend past that on the right hand side. So we've got ten point six two acres there. Okay, so that drive then is on the piece of land that you have leased yes, until April thirtieth, twenty twenty four. Yes, ma'am. So help me understand how they can do that. There's a question. Yes, <laughs> I don't understand how they can put a drive there. On the property that he's leased, Bobby, can you address that? I think what they're, I'll, I'll answer it. It's fine. Okay. I, it, what they're doing is planning for the future. It's not. It's not necessarily relevant to this this particular case because this is addressing the the land use at the time of redevelopment. Those things will. Okay. Will, we just will occur. We're just planning for the future. Okay. We are just addressing the <coughs> land use, whether that land is that. Parcel is suitable for retail and dining. Sure. But when you're when you're brought to that situation there, and you're saying, um, "Well, that drive is going to be put in pretty quickly." That's what I'm being told. A lot the drive is going to be put in pretty quickly. And can you work with me on that guy? So what that tells me is that that drive is going to go in pretty not. It's not a situation like what we're talking about. It's in the future. That that says that drive is going to go in now or pretty quick within months or six months or whatever it is. I think in that case, that's going to be between the person that you lease the land from mm -hmm. and the person that's developing the land. Mm -hmm. We're just we're just addressing the use of that piece of land, sure. not necessarily how they're going to enter it and whether they're going to put a drive there, because that's right. that's another issue for another body. Right. Well, I'm just making sure mm -hmm. that everybody's up front and yeah. that that we know what we've got a hold of. Because yes, sir. My lease is right here, and mm -hmm. it's got 10.62 acres on top of it. Okay. Until April 30th, 2024. Okay. okay. We appreciate your comments. Okay. Yes, Thank sir. you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in opposition? Okay, Bobby, you're going to answer this, of course. Both of y'all say. Uh, I believe what he's wanting to do first will be a couple of lots on the east side of this property. And that road will be private. It won't be a city street. Commercial, you can have private drives and stuff. So it'll be a private drive that, that he will have to maintain if it is tore up. But I think his plan is to not develop the property that is part of the 10.6 till after the lease is over. And so this will be done, you know, what we do build won't go on to the lease property at this time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone else to speak in opposition of this item? <laughs> Okay, if not, we'll bring it back into commission. Any questions? Regardless of what they do, it's between the person leasing the property and the person that's a landlord. That's so we don't have anything to do with that. No, we just want to, so. is this a good area for retail and dining yep. or the use of this land? So if that road goes in, 
and that's the case there, I'm not responsible for that road. That's I'm not. I'm not any any part of that situation. Whether it gets torn up, whether it gets a hold of it, I'm okay. not responsible for. I okay. want to make sure. That yes, sir. Clear. We're not addressing that part of it here. Okay. This this body only addresses the land use. Sure. So I appreciate okay. it. Yes, sir. Thank you. For a motion. I move to approve. Second. Moved by Alex, a second by Ethan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion? Okay. Letitia is, is abstaining. So the motion passes. Thank you. Okay, our next item is request to rezone A1 to F1 at 1445 Old Military Road and 3612 Dina Lane. Mr. Ryan. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is a request, um, as she said, to rezone 1445 Old Military Road and 3612 Dina Lane from A1 um, to NF1 multifamily residential. Um, this sits just south of Donald Ridge and to the west of Old Military Road. Dina Road basically splits these properties where you have an acre um, to the north and then to the south is the additional 4.11 acres. Um, to the north, you already have an MF2 zoned area. Uh, the west also is zoned MF2. Um, and then there's some agriculture out in this area as well. Uh, this is part of the transition zone, um, which is designated to allow for more intense land uses, um, such as this request, depending on adjacent uses. Uh, because of this and what's surrounding it, we believe um, this would be a, a good use for the area and we would recommend approval. Questions for Ryan? Thank you. Hey, is anyone here to speak in favor of this item? Well, Bobby French, 1021 Front Street. Uh, representing uh, Tom Watson and uh, Mitch Hart on on these two par properties. Uh, I think from from what I gather, best Tom and them are looking at putting in some townhomes. Is what they're wanting. They're not wanting to really put like regular multifamily, probably some kind of two story townhomes in there. Uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly how many or anything yet. There, uh, but that's that's the plan. Okay. Hope you miss prayer. Any questions for Bobby? Thank you. Anyone else to speak in favor of this item? Anyone to speak in opposition of this request? Yes, sir. Okay. Speak your name and your address, please. Yeah, it's uh, Daniel Canese, and uh, I live 3585 Donald Ridge, which is Caddy Corner across the street from where this property is. And uh, my concerns are the ingress egress of the property because there is a blind curve right at that property before you get it on Old Military. If you come going, uh, I guess it's south on Old Military, and as you cross Donald Ridge, there's a blind curve there. And if you're going east on Donald Ridge, <laughs> you're risking yourself every time you go across there because it's blind to one side and then blind to the other side. And people are typically going 45, 55 miles an hour through there. Uh, if you add some property there, which I really don't have an issue with this type of property, uh, you've got a potential very dangerous situation. And I'm not going to be the one in danger, but I'm afraid you put more people in that area. There's already a new apartment complex just west of that on uh, Donald Ridge that has increased the traffic flow. If you potentially include or build a school there, which the school district, I think, owns the property, that's really um, just pretty much across the street from there where you see the city... Um, line there, the red line, just up from that, 
is uh, school property, which I understand they were originally going to use for building a, maybe a high school someday. So to me, you're building a, you're putting a whole lot of stuff in a uh, area that I don't know that anybody's really considered the traffic flow there. And I just want to, I'd like to have somebody actually address that before somebody gets killed at that intersection, because anytime you go across old military east, you literally are looking to the left, kind of over a hill, around the corner, and uh, over. People get on you quick. And as you're looking that way, you have maybe 50 yards to the right where you can actually see. So by the time you look one way, look the other way, the place you didn't look first is going to get you. Okay, that's all, that's my only comments on it. Thank you for your so comments. So please take sir. consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in opposition of this item? We will bring it into commission. Commissioners. I, I will make y'all aware. We staff uh, is very well aware of that. We almost got got hit when we did a visit out there. So <laughs> we, that is something that when through the review process of planning, we'll be very cautious of. Is that a city road? The city maintain that road? Uh, parts of it, yeah. Parts of it? it I mean, it get, quickly gets into the county. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. So, so it might be a county road issue? County? Okay. It, I mean, the, the eastern side is, is in is in county, but that the, the area that we're, we're concerned about is city. Okay. So would you just make additional signage or flashing lights or something to just help or is that? No, the, the site considerations we would, we would think about are limiting access, making sure the access is located in an area that's the, the, the safest or most visible. Okay. So maybe limiting whether they can enter or exit on Donald Ridge Road right there. Uh, the, the property doesn't, doesn't have access to, to Donald Ridge. Donald Ridge. Yeah. Okay. So okay. It, so. Like, for instance, one of the things we would consider is not not permitting an unlimited number of driveways along there, but trying to trying to concentrate to one or two driveways. Okay. But that would all happen in the plan review but that would be when they address. submit plans. Okay. Okay. We're just land use. Okay. So, any other questions? Discussion? I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Ethan, second by Leticia. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposition? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Okay, our next item is a request to rezone R1 to a PUD at uh, 0.59 acres plus or minus at the southeast corner of South German Lane and Bill Bell Lane. Yes, uh, this is a property that has been left as a remainder uh, from some previous uh, phases of uh, Bell Valley uh, subdivision. Uh, it's currently zoned R1. All the adjacent property is zoned R1. What they're doing is requesting a, a PUD. Uh, it's a triple frontage lot. <laughs> and so uh, that, that's a, a, a big no-no in the, the subdivision regulations. So going through the PUD process to help clean that, that issue up. Um, we anticipate that the traffic impact will be fairly minimal with three lots uh, all accessing off of La Croix. Um, there would be about 30 traffic trips generated uh, each day on a typical work day, uh, weekday. Uh, the site's not in any floodplain. Uh, they'll have to coordinate on bringing utilities to the site with, with the, the plat of it. Um, in... You know, as I said, under the normal regulations previously, this was brought in with, with two lots as, as was proposed. Uh, this application has been amended uh, from what was originally uh, submitted uh, about a month ago. Uh, originally, there were, there were four lots. We asked the applicant to reduce it uh, down to, to where it would accommodate basically a 25-foot setback in sort of a normal standard R1 uh, setback. Uh, so these are very similar to R1 lots, in exception of the triple frontage, as well as uh, one lot has a lot width that's a, is about 10 feet less than a normal R1 lot. 
Uh, that's the, the main uh, difference right there. Our recommendations that uh, would, would be for approval of this, permitted uses would be limited to three, three units. Um, no fences allowed to exceed three, three feet in the front yard. Uh, all lots would take access from La Croix. Uh, applicant would, would plat the property in accordance with the subdivision regulations, excluding restrictions on triple frontage lots. Uh, the developer would be responsible for installation of handicap ramps as well as sidewalks on Bill Bell uh, and South German prior to filing of the final plat. Um, the front and exterior building setbacks shall be at least 25 feet. Uh, and then the, the development would meet all the provisions of R1, excluding lot width and requirements and those prohibiting triple frontage lots. Any questions? So is that the main reason for just because it's going to be smaller lots to have a thin unit development? It, again, it, yeah, it's coming. It's coming because of that that triple frontage issue. So, are there any side setbacks? Any side setbacks? The, the side setbacks would be the normal R one. Okay. Yep. Is there any circumstance to where, if we rezone to PUD, this intended usage would not happen? Like, no matter what, if we rezone, they the only thing they can do there is this three housing units, right? With with PD, mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. Yeah. Questions. Thank you, James. Anyone speak in favor, Mr. Yeah. Shaw? Frank Shaw, thirteen, fifteen Main Street, and uh, these are my lots. And Roush Coleman will build on those, and it will be consistent with the neighborhood. We actually have twenty-five thousand square feet in that triangle. And if you look at the map that we had up earlier, when you have a big sweeping street like this, you see there's an odd out parcel there that we're talking about the PUD. But if you look at those other lots on the east and west side of the street, you see some really long uh, arcing lots. We just did a, a variance on a lot, or, uh, Ms. Chairman, uh, across the street from that because when you get a big curve in a street and the, the city built this through there to open this area up, uh, you get you get oddball lots and we have several of them and also what happens is you you lose property a good bit i have enough i have enough square footage there for six four six thousand square foot lots but because of the setbacks we're, we're down to three and every lot you lose when your developer is important is very important so this is a three-sided parcel um it was um we we had it platted originally with our phase on the just to the south of that the other lots on James calls it the French word, but I call it LaCroix, okay, LaCroix. And um, then we came back knowing we we're going to have to do a putt on it, and that's where we are. So any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. My friend from Roush Coleman just left. He had to go back to Fayetteville, but uh, they have bought the lots, and so that's what's going to go there. And there's no other purpose that we could put on them, with a putt particularly, but um, they're sold and we'll close as soon as we get it approved if we do. What's that? That was convenient. He left you here to answer. I know questions. he did. He left me high and dry, I think didn't he? Did that in part on purpose. He said he was only here on the various. And I said we got more to do. And he said I got to go to Fayetteville. Okay, the, the, the three foot fencing is, is that? Um, I don't know what James is speaking of on the three foot fencing. We don't put any fences in the front yard. Essentially, we don't we don't have any existing fence regulations, <laughs> and so <laughs> anytime that we have a PUD, we put in we put in fence requirements. Well, I mean, I just, in case there was like an entrance, like a stone entrance or something? No. Just a wooden it, fence in the front yard. I don't know what he's wanting certain to certain areas of town, if you wanted to go put up an eight-foot fence in your front yard, you could. Can you really? Yes. Well, I can assure you we're not going to build any three-foot fences or of any kind. I promise you that. Okay. You can put that in About there. We'll, we'll agree to that. Or eight foot in the front yard. <laughs> now, they might want to fence their backyards like people do, but there won't be any front yard fences. Okay. Anybody have any, any questions? questions? Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Anybody else to speak in favor of this item? Anyone to speak in opposition to this item? Okay, they're being done. We'll bring it back into commission. So just know we had a public hearing. Yep. To R1. No, I mean about a week and a half ago on this. <laughs> there there are for the PUD requirements, there's a public meeting uh, yeah, in advance yeah. of the public hearing. Well, people up and I don't think, 
discussion? Any discussion? We'll take a motion. Motion to approve staff recommendation. Drew. Motion by Drew and a second by Rebecca. Rebecca. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, our next item is a request for conditional use permit child, for a child care facility in 01 at 300 to 350 block of East Hogan Lane. Yes, uh, as she said, this is for a child care facility um, in the O2 district. Uh, they're planning on putting a Goddard school there, which I know there's one in Little Rock uh, you may be familiar with. Uh, the site is 1.5 acres. Uh, it is in the O2 Quiet Office District. Um, to the west, you have O2 and also Weston Estates. The north is office, and then there's agriculture on the east and south. Uh, we expect a moderate traffic impact for this, um, approximately 419 vehicle trips uh, per weekday. Uh, we looked at this. Um, the child care center is going to be about 8,800 square feet um, for the building, and they'll have three separate play areas in the back. Uh, we would recommend approval of this with the following conditions. That operating hours are limited to Monday through Friday, 7 to 6. All proposed site improvements shall be subject to development standards as outlined in Article 1101 of the Conway Zoning Code, unless otherwise noted in permit conditions. Driveway is to align with the shared property line to the north and will be required to provide shared access with the proposed out parcel. Parking layout will require revisions and will be addressed during the development review process. The property shall be platted in accordance with the Conway, Conway subdivision ordinance prior to the issuance of building permits. Decorative fencing or decorative vinyl coated chain link fencing is required. Any new fencing shall comply with Article 1101 development review standards of the zoning code. Fencing type and placement shall be approved by planning staff prior to installation. All signage shall be permitted and installed in accordance with Article 1301 of the Conway zoning code. Upon development review approval, any expansions or additions to the structure or outdoor play area, as well as any changes to the use shall require an amended or new conditional use permit. The conditional use shall automatically expire if the approved use ceases for more than 18 consecutive months. And the conditional use shall become null and void if construction for the site is not commenced within 18 months of approval. What did you say at the beginning when you said this is going to be like Little Rock? I didn't... It's, it's the Goddard School, okay. and they can speak more on it. They're, they have several around, but I know there's one in Little Rock. Yeah, no, I, I just couldn't hear what you said. I heard Little Rock. I was yeah. like, it's, it's, no, I, I guess we all know. missed it because we were asking <laughs> each other, too. I don't know what that is. The Goddard School. Yeah, is it's, it's, is it's it a Montessori? Montessori? No, I don't just, believe just so. They can speak on that. It's it's like a pre-K type, okay. type school. Is it the same owner as in Little Rock? That I can't answer. I'm Is this, a, about, is this a transitional area? I just I didn't know that was A1 behind there because there's like a house behind there. In, in there's there. some residential in the area um, on the A1 lots. Okay. I thought it's it's uh, designated for office use in the land use plan. Okay, because I thought that was developing as a neighborhood back there because there's a house back there. But Okay. I don't know if this is a you question or a James question, but why is there limitations on the operating line? when so many people have different working schedules and things? That, that is something the applicant put in the application. Yeah, it's these were the hours that were, that were requested. Well, it's, it's a, it's a recommendation. I was just wondering, is this like across the board, like that's general, or is, are there any kind of limitations on the when daycares can operate? It's no, just, it's just because it's a conditional use, and they put, they put that in there. But it's, it's limited. So are they limiting their hours, or did staff? They, they put that in the application. I just had no idea. What was your question? Oh, I was just wondering if they put that in there because maybe they thought that that would help get it approved, but I, th I felt like that was limiting. So I didn't know if the staff um, recommended that they put that in there because I didn't. No, you know, we didn't recommend any hours. Okay. That's what they said they, they needed for their use, so. Okay. Well, should with. that be a staff okay. recommendation? Can it be removed? I don't think they make a habit of changing people's 
applications, right? If somebody says no, I'm not saying that they changed it. I'm just saying if it's not necessary, do we have to approve it with that as a recommendation? Can that just be if it's not necessary? Then more rope. We can have the applicant speak on it if you guys. Yeah, they're like. here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hey. You're speaking in favor of this item, I take it. <laughs> um, in favor. I'm Brad Peterson with Craft and Toll. The address is 10825 Financial Center Parkway in Little Rock. And I'm representing the, the applicant in this case is the current property owner, but we work with the developers and owners of the Goddard franchise in Arkansas. So they do operate location in Little Rock, um, Joan, or Fayetteville, Bentonville. And currently have one under construction in Jonesboro. So it's a national brand that has a tie-in with a standard curriculum and age levels. It is toddler, or excuse me, infant through pre-K with some enrichment programs for kindergarten age. So nothing over kindergarten age children in the facility. Um, they have their standard program, their standard ownership group, but they do look for local operators. So each of the four facilities that they currently have ongoing, and this one would have a separate operator that is local to the community. They don't operate from a central office or anything. Everyone lives in the community where the school is located. Um, regarding the hours of operation, that is something that we just want to be transparent. That's Goddard's standard operating hours. So um, I don't feel it needs to be a condition that it's limited to uh, that as a child care faci facility. You know, in the case this ever did change ownership and maybe the Goddard brand went away, the next owner may have a different philosophy on their hours and times of operations. Um, we've reviewed the staff comments and the other conditions, and we're fine with all the other conditions that have been presented. And uh, I can answer other other questions you may have. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in favor of this item? Anyone to speak in opposition to this item? There being none, we'll bring it to commission. I support removing the hours just for the sole fact that it's doesn't seem like it's needed if the group feels that way too. For all the reasons that we said, it may change ownership. They may have to accommodate somebody um, if it's not necessary. I think I'm also going to have to abstain because I may or may not know these people, but I don't know if I do or not. So that was <laughs> for my question. You got a child on the waiting list. <laughs> no, no, but I may or may not know these people, but I'm not actually sure who the applicant is, but I may or may not know. So I'm going to have to abstain. Okay. <laughs> James, any feelings on removing the hours? I mean, doesn't hurt anything, right? No bad not, practices. Not necessarily. Um, it, could the last... be, it could be another owner of the of a child care facility at some point. Not yeah, I, but I, the condition I'm, I'm of two would... minds about it. Uh, you know, from from a standpoint of if I am the neighbor, is that is that something I I would necessarily love? Probably not. Uh, from a standpoint of if it's okay Monday through Friday, why is it not okay on Saturday? You know, so I think if it, it there's multiple options, you can take out the hours of operation, you could extend it, you could, you know, you can keep it as is. So I guess our question is: Do we err on the side of less, of <laughs> smaller government, basically, of saying restrict it, or just saying it's what they ask for and what they ask for? That's the question. If that's what they asked for, that's what they can, that's what we'll vote on. And I guess the next person would ask for, does this um, cup cease if they move or change ownership? Only if it's after 18 months of nothing <clears throat> there, the way it's written. And if they were to vacate mm -hmm. and the school closed, would that conditional use permit still stay there? The with? conditional use permit goes with the land. With the land, so okay. Un unless the use ceases or the use doesn't start. Mm -hmm. So if they closed and there was no longer a daycare there, it could still be a daycare. Yeah. If you'll look, if you'll look at condition nine, conditional use shall automatically expire if the approved use ceases for more than eighteen consecutive months. Okay. Right. Say so we give them what they ask for, and if somebody wants Agre to change it yep. in the future, Agreed. they can amend their conditional use permit. Yes, Agreed. Is that a motion? I make a motion to. <laughs> Approve the staff recommendation with the conditions as indicated in the report. Second. Second. 
motion by eighth and a second by Alexander. Thank you. Hey, all in favor? Aye. 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 One abstention, Rebecca. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Okay, and that ends our public hearing for this evening. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I don't know him. I could have voted. How are you going to vote? I already voted for it. Okay. <laughs> Transparent. It's always good to err on the side of transparency. No, come on. My kid is going to kindergarten, but I know the lady that owns it in Little Rock, and I was like, hey, is this you? And the detective came in after the talk, we voted, so. I just didn't want to compromise. Yes, I didn't want to. Obviously, we're not good friends since she didn't tell me, you know. Hello. Okay, our next (laughs) item. Yes, so staff updates. Uh, This is something we'll add as sort of a a regular item, uh, just have have rolling. Uh, One of the things we've got working on currently is the Oak Street Ahead plan. Um, So we have another steering committee meeting this month. We anticipate that that project will be wrapped up by the end of the year. So we'll be having uh, some review and public hearings for you all at that time. Uh, Very excited about it. I think there's some cool changes that are are possible being enabled by that plan. So it, I think it's a, a very, very good thing. Uh, some things that could be somewhat transformative um, for Conway. Uh, I'm sure you all heard the news uh, about being awarded the uh, raise grant, $24.6 million. So that's, that's going to be a big thing. Uh, increase the number of uh, greenway trails, uh, percentage of greenway trails by over 350% in the city. So we'll go from uh, under five miles to 20 miles, which is going to be fantastic, connect the entire city. So that's that's pretty cool. Great work to you guys again on that. Oh, thank you. Um, what bringing to you tonight, so this is just a, a, an initial review. Uh, if we're good, we'll set up a public hearing for next month. Uh, this is for conditional use permits and our rezoning process. One of the reasons that we're, we're bringing this is kind of highlighted by that, um, the, the questions in the, the previous application. So one of the issues that we've had, we have tons and tons and tons of old conditional uses that, that are specified just by one individual's name, or we don't have any, any uh, sunset clause for it, or we don't have anything where it says, hey, this never started, so it doesn't go away. And so we've got some very old conditional use permits, some that we probably wouldn't approve today because conditions have changed uh, in those areas. And so moving forward, we want to have it basically where there's a provision when a conditional use passes that if it ceases for a certain number of months, it goes away. If it never starts, it goes away. Uh, So basically a use it or or lose it provision. Um, So again, that's really intended so that we don't have something that's just sitting out there for a very long time. Um, additionally, we added some additional review criteria in there. That's, a, that's another big one. Um, had some language on there about expansion. Um, that's another one where that's a, a general policy that we've been following that if the conditional use expands, then we require an updated conditional, conditional use permit. We wanted to make sure that that was uh, adequately reflected uh, in code. And then additionally, having a, a revocation process. So if someone doesn't doesn't abide by the terms of their conditional use permit, what happens at that point? Uh, we don't really currently have a, a strong revocation process, and so this would outline exactly what our steps are. The other half of this is uh, dealing with amendments. Uh, there's nothing really, I, I would say, wrong with the current amendments um, provisions. It's just that we wanted to clarify things a little bit more. Uh, and so it, it's got three different processes. One, that if it's initiated, uh, an amendment is initiated by the council or, or mayor's office, it's initiated by the planning commission, or if it's initiated, initiated by a, a property owner. Basically laying out the processes in there. Uh, if it's initiated by the council, uh, they you can either follow the process that's outlined in 1456-423 of the Arkansas Code, which basically says 
They can change the code <laughs> if they want to. Um, or they can uh, route it through a process where it goes uh, through the, the, the sort of if it's initiated by the Planning Commission. Did we get something on that? Is it this? And this is, this is the same version that was sent out to y'all several weeks ago. Oh, I didn't but get we got one. a digital copy of it. It wasn't one in my packet. Yeah, we, it was not distributed in your packet. Here's an interesting oh. uh, And then uh, additionally, it's got some guidelines for, for decision making uh, that are included as part of that. Uh, just basically consideration of things like public comments, um, consistency with the comprehensive plan. It's got some guidelines. Um, the, the benefits of it, uh, any issue, issues that have been identified, wanted to have some at least some some guidelines for, for decision making uh, through the process. Uh, basically, we, we don't currently have that. Didn't want to tie it down. Uh, in some other communities, uh, there is a, a, a requirement that it be that rezonings always be consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, given that our comprehensive plan is is so out of date currently, we didn't want to do that because it would just make a lot of a lot more paperwork uh, at this time. That may be something that we look at in the future uh, once that that plan's updated. So, big fan of the staff update section. So I hope we keep this going. <laughs> is there a uh, is the plan to have a special meeting just on this and then come to the the planning commission in a public hearing or are you saying this will be before us in a regular schedule yeah i mean if y'all if if y'all are okay with it we'll have some additional additional changes to it there's there's some additional things that need, need to change just about city council appeal because uh, that that that's one thing that uh isn't necessarily reflected in here and so require making sure that we require if it's a if it's appeal to city council then that, that, that there be an additional public hearing um, so there's there's some things in there Allowance for an amendment of an application before it before it comes to the meeting. Uh, currently, the way it, it's written, is that for instance, if the, like in the the Langford situation, if they amended their request, we would require two public hearings. Um, and I think we need to. It needs to be a little bit more specified, basically, to say that if they amend the application, so if the application is amended towards being less intense, that can happen before the meeting. Uh, if it's more intense, then you'd have to have two public hearings. Basically, basically, because in that situation, that could be used as abused as a way to, to you know, get around having to properly notify the, the adjacent property. So. so, what do you need from us tonight on this? Basically, just uh, head nods if you're. If you're cool, cool and then uh, if if so, we'll we'll bring it back next month under a public hearing. So, so your goal here is really just to give us an opportunity to ask questions early on, have more time with it. Yep. Beautiful. You just, read, it. you just want us to read through this and see if we have questions or is that? Yeah, yeah. We we sent it out a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. want to give you well, an opportunity to. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but, was it with any this? any other questions? Was it with this? No, it was it was in uh, it was in a separate, was a separate uh, email. So I read the uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. In addition Sorry. to things you said tonight, I thought. Okay. Yeah. Very good. All right. Thanks, James. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't do my homework. Okay, that finishes all items on our agenda for tonight. Entertain a motion to dismiss. So moved. Drew, move. Second. Rebecca, second. Y'all have a good night. <laughs>